Well, welcome back, everybody. Uh, Tesseract LNO Fireside Chats on our next episode as we prepare for the Aether Sprint. We're with our with some teammates of our next presentation. They're uh, raised to jet power. Um, uh, and welcome, guys. Major Hill, Sergeant Nessel, thanks for uh, taking time out of your busy schedules. And I know for uh, Sergeant Nessel, halfway across the world, even from us, um, we definitely took some time to make sure that we could coordinate uh, as much as possible, just so we could sit down with you guys uh, as you prepare for your next leg of your journey um, here at the Sprint in your next presentation. So uh, without further ado, if you guys just want to take a moment, I know there's two of you on with us, uh, two of you have a much bigger team. Um, so if you want to just introduce yourselves and, and mention the other teammates that are not with us here today, and then we'll just get into what your project is, when it started, and, and uh, keep that ball rolling of, of what we got going on with with all the time and, and energy that you guys have, have put in and as far as what this innovation product is and uh, what you've done with it and, and your expectations moving forward. Awesome, well, I'll go ahead and go first uh, and then I'll pass it over to the Jet to talk about the, the team that he's uh, really leading and putting together uh, out there in Kadena. Uh, so Ray Hill, I'm the oh. PACAF innovation lead and I'm also a, a data scientist by trade. And yeah, uh, working on Raise the Jet Power Solar Power Generator is a really awesome uh, capability, not only for peacetime, but as a resilient ACE technology as well. Um, but like I said, I'd like to pass it over to the Jet to get to uh, talk about how, how it works and the rest of the team. Yeah, how are you guys doing? Um, Jet Nestle, um, dental by trade, but for the last couple of years, I've sat in as the SEL of Wing Innovations and then recently transitioned uh, in the summer um, as the Agile Combat Employment um, Resource Manager. So uh, on my team, I also have Senior Mass Sergeant Jason Yunker, um, Tech Sergeant Cameron Olson, as well as Tech Sergeant Manny Rivero. Um, so we have a very diverse pool. Uh, Jason is a POL troop. And uh, we have a VM, so vehicle maintenance guy and, and Cam, and then uh, somebody who works at the Red Horse Squadron, uh, Manny Rivero up in Guam. So we're kind of fielded along the Pacific. We're truly a Pacific team. Um, we're, we're kind of hodgepodge on multiple different islands. Um, yeah, and we all came together and started working on uh, Race, to J, uh, Race to Jet Power, R2JP. Uh, which is a uh, resilient uh, energy source. It's sustainable energy that provides um, up to 30 kilowatts, uh, probably more, to be honest. Uh, it goes all the way up to 60 kilowatts, depending on the load that you're willing to do. But it's able to pretty much replace um, dependent on temperance almost 100% of uh, diesel fuse fuel cost savings, right? Uh, anything that requires ground power can be attached to this thing. Um, it has multiple different types of uh, outlets, so it can be used with allied partners. Um, majority of our equipment, I, I, I've i pretty much scoured the base on what I could attach this thing to. So it, it could even offset medical hospital generator <laughs> generators that are already integrated into the buildings, um, contingency responses, base op kits, uh, you name it, I've pretty much found a way to connect this thing up, up and going and keep it powered. And yeah, so this this was, like Ray had mentioned earlier, uh, kind of inspired by, uh, in 2022, when I was the SEL for Wing Innovations, uh, our quarter system, we worked really well uh, closely with uh, Pavilion looking at the solar portion of it, we heard nothing but great feedback as we fielded the arc water technology um, in multiple exercises from Jay Bear's Northern Edge to Cope North, even the brief that we provided to the SAF team um, through the contingency response group rep, we had a uh, Master Sergeant Kyle Clunt out there up at Anderson. His feedback was overwhelmingly positive for the solar generation. Um, with the caveat that why couldn't we produce more, right? I think at the time of pure solar load, it was like nine kilowatts for the arc water system. And we're like, well, why can't, what are we looking at? What, what are current traditional generators producing? 
So we wanted to push the limits and try and compete as much as we could with the traditional 30 kilowatt generator, right? That's the one that everybody deploys with. I spoke with uh, the LRS teams. I spoke with even the medical logistics teams just to see what we were building into our uh, unit type codes um, for our contingencies and deployments. And that seemed to be the most relevant generator that we currently use within the Air Force. And so I was like, well, that's that's the one right that's the one we that's that's what we're competing with that's the traditional mode that we're we're we're, we're kind of going against and then i started to trying to dig is like well what's what's the what's the cost savings right how do we how do we really try and say this is better right um so this is where manny rivero kind of comes in and so typhoon mawar hit uh, 2023 they between the CRG, the Contingency Response Group, and FEMA, they fielded 78 generators, right? Um, based on average fuel diesel cost uh, information provided by Jason Yunker, that's $2.4,000 per generator per day, right? If you do the math, that's 78 generators. Two, I'm going to leave this up to Ray, <laughs> but it's, 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 <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot of money expended all, this, all at one time, and they had to refuel that thing once or twice a day and so we're spending pretty much just man hours trying to fuel this thing constantly um main, maintaining water supplies hospitals all that stuff so um it really pushed us to find a cost savings as well as a resilient source to maintain energy in times of situations where just like an act of god right we we have to be able to respond quickly and effectively so race to jet power is really inspired by um kind of almost the need um especially with the the ace concepts that we're, we're we're currently looking into to be able to respond effectively and as fast as possible i know that was a long pretty long-winded <laughs> no that's that's good jet and I'll, I'll follow up with some some long-winded uh expansion of that so yeah, um, everything uh, just talking about uh, spot on. Um, you know, if you were to compare this generator, uh, the solar powered raise the jet power to the traditional 30 kilowatt, uh, you're taking up equal pallet space, no more, no less. Um, if you were just to compare it to one generator, if you were to replace one 30 kilowatt generator and just ran it, um, this raise the jet power technology would pay for itself in less than five months. Um, in just the fuel cost savings alone that you'd be getting from that generator. Um, but what I really want to hit on is what, what Jet was talking about uh, was how this can be used in the ACE concept, right? So um, using solar as a resilient power source is not uncommon on the island, uh, in, on Oahu here um, or out in some of the other spots. Um, you know, if our main power supply on island goes down, we're going to be relying on solar power. Well, when you come to the ACE concept, it's really the same thing. Um, our base power supplies, those nice big central uh, locations on each of our bases, that's just one juicy missile target, right? And what we actually really like is the whole idea of ACE is that we disperse our forces so that we can keep attacking. Well, actually, with solar power, you're actually dispersing your energy asset on the base. And so if you want to take out my energy, yeah, go ahead, waste missiles on all my solar panels that are all around throughout base. Please do that. I would love it if you were not trying to knock out my solar panels. And also this, uh, the solar paneling that we're talking about, it's mobile uh, rolling fabric, right? So what that allows you to do is Okay, um, say you needed to, you could, you know, you could talk about airdropping it, um, you could talk about pulling it out of storage or something along those lines and setting it up at time of need. And so what I've been really impressed um, with the team is that we said, okay, in an ACE construct, if that main base power supply goes down, what are we going to do at that point? And what are the kinds of things that we'd be needing the power? So now I'd like to paint the picture that, you know, you're out on one of these islands, missiles have come in, you've got holes in your runway, and you've got no base power. What are the kinds of things that you need to be able to run? Well, the first thing you need to run is uh, probably the medical tent. 
to be able to help all of the people that are have just been injured. And actually, we ran that at Northern Edge TAC-1. We powered the ACE medical tent, the current prototype that PACAF is building um, as a program of record. We ran it the entire time off of these solar panels uh, to test that capability. Uh, second thing you're probably going to need is, is water. And like uh, Jet was talking about, we kind of did what I call iterative innovation. And we said, OK, how do we get that drinking water? Uh, how do we make sure we get it and we get something that produces enough water and it's something that everyone's comfortable using? So we've tested that as well um, out at Mobility Guardian. And then third, well, we need to be able to talk to somebody uh, to be able to say, hey, um, we've got, we just got struck. We need to provide battle damage assessment. We need to explain what we need. And so we also, there's a C2 piece here. And so uh, we've done uh, a couple different C2 experiments. One we did here on island on Oahu was uh, setting up 10 nipper sipper stations and running it off this solar paneling, uh, hooking up a Starlink terminal and doing 24 seven ops uh, for a week. Um, we think that actually our R2JP kit can do somewhere closer to 40 or 50 nipper stations. Um, and yeah, we're really, yeah, we're, we're really excited uh, about this capability. Um, I think Jet hit really well on that peacetime use. And then he also hit on that humanitarian assistance disaster relief, which is obviously huge out here in the islands. Um, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of these places we're trying to build runways are saying, Hey, can you, uh, can you build us wells? We want to have some backup. You know, we want to be able to provide clean water. Oh, we said, oh, well, hey, while you're waiting for the well, we might have something solar powered that we can share with you uh, to help you out, whether disaster comes or whether you just want to use it from day to day. So it's a really impressive technology. And I, yeah, I'm really impressed with the, the work that Jet and his team has done out here. Yeah, guys, that sounds awesome. Thanks for the, the backstory and all that. Let's uh, let's just take this back a little bit and start where where this idea came from, where you kind of jumped in on the project and uh, where where you stepped in and how you got it into the sprint to begin with. So, yeah, so this project ended up starting actually with the Tesseract team um, reaching out originally to myself um, about Project Arcwater. And they said, hey, we're looking for a requirement. I happen to be running PACAF's capability gaps list at that time. And I said, hey, I think I've got a couple requirements that Arcwater would help us to solve. And um, using the Tesseract team, we were able to approach the vice chief of staff through Momentum Funds to purchase us a couple of Arcwater units, uh, one out of Alaska, one out at Kadena, and one out at Anderson, because we wanted to test it in a couple of diverse environments. Uh, but then uh, the story just goes from there, just like Jet was talking about. Um, out at Kadena, they got this thing. They were using it. They were getting user feedback. And then they said, OK, oh, this is awesome. How do we make this better? How do we take this to the next step? And, uh, you know, being the PACAF innovation lead, I'm, I'm fortunate to get to see a lot of innovation projects. And it can sometimes be really intimidating to, to look back and say, OK, well, I, I did this innovation. How did it actually go? And, oh, hey, I remember I really worked hard on that a year ago. Then I PCS. What's actually happening with it today? And um, I'm always, I, even myself, when I'm sending out those emails to check on how things went, because I know how much work I may have poured into or one of the different airmen out in theater may have poured into, I'm like, okay, hit send. And then I get a little nervous when I see a response back. Um, I'm actually always, it always exceeds my expectations where things have gone. But whenever you do actually look back, that's an opportunity, uh, like in this case, um, we the feedback we were getting from the field was positive in almost every area. And so we said, okay, that's great, but how can we make it even better? And the field was providing us those answers as well. And so that iterative innovation is really what started here. This, this project was really spawned from, uh, from Arcwater, uh, inspired by, as Jet said, uh, and I think that's, that's, that's pretty cool. I'm not aware of many other innovation projects that come around like that. Uh, you guys kind of, you know, you mentioned, um, uh, Major Hill, Tesseract reached out to you. Um, a, a normal question that we ask the teams when they have innovation projects like this, and maybe, maybe this is something you can think about some of the other projects that you mentioned in well, but as well, um, 
there is always a buy-in factor at different levels. Um, so for this project or for others, what's been kind of the, the hard points to get this project across or maybe some of the easier points that you thought would be a barrier, but it wasn't because of maybe the name recognition of what it was or Tesseract had kind of already had a, a push in this on, on it because of, of the work that Arcwater did previous. Yeah, absolutely. I, th I think that, yeah, so we had a little bit of, you know, we had a little bit of, uh, you're right, we had a little bit of energy. Um, we knew that there was some interest in half um, related to, to Arcwater. And obviously that allowed us to get that initial funding to get the Arcwater systems out, uh, which is fantastic. But you're right, you need support at all levels. And what I'm really fortunate to have out here in PACAF is the people on the ground level that are going to to actually implement this and, and make a difference. And so, you know, it's a weird call when I call up Jet and his team and I'm like, hey, hope you don't mind. Uh, the vice chief of staff just bought you guys a new toy and I really need you to run it through the ringer and run it around base and to really give us feedback uh, to make sure this thing makes sense before we buy them for every island in the Pacific. And uh, fortunately, uh, you know, with Jet, we have somebody who's going to go and grab that and do exactly that. Um, and so that is our first our first line and our first level of success. Right. Um, in in the technology world, we always talk a lot about what's called the valley of death. Um, and in the valley of death, if you're not familiar with the term, it's OK. Hey, we we started something. But what's going to you know, uh, there's a lot of hindrances or there's a lot of things that can cause something to fail. Uh, and we call that falling into the valley of death. My favorite thing about getting things out into the hands of the airmen out in PACAF is that if something needs to go in the valley of death, we'll push it in there quicker, right? We will test it and say, hey, this doesn't really make sense for us out in PACAF. Does it make sense for the warfighter? Push it in there and let's start focusing on other things. Or we'll give you feedback and say, hey, this is this. We think it needs to just look a little different. Uh, in in this case, I think that's what we're doing. We're, we're kind of taking arc water and we're saying, hey, we've looked at it and we've got uh, it's actually even it's actually even better than you imagined. Uh, if you look at the solar panel, solar power aspect. And now we're, we're trying to do is we're trying to take that message back to half. Right. And we're trying to say, hey. Arc water was awesome. Um, we've got, we've got, you know, kind of the, the evolution. We'd never be here without the great team that came up with arc water. Um, but now ha half, we really think that if you're going to buy something for every island in the Pacific, this is what you should be looking at. And so now we're using Tesseract to go back the other way, right? And we're using the Aether Sprints to be able to get out and talk to half. Um, there's a little bit of nuance here in how the Air Force runs. PACAF is not an organized train and equip MAGCOM. Therefore, we don't really have that ability to have programmer records. Um, we don't really write 1067 capital R requirements. And so we've seen and we've had success in the past with other projects of getting things in front of half A4, getting things in front of the SECAF or CSAF and getting a lot of traction um, with those OT and E match comms to make these things program of records. And so that's exactly who we're leaning on and who we're running out to now. Um, we haven't really had pushback, I would say, uh, yet on this project. What we're really looking for is an ability to just get our word out there. And uh, we're fortunate for this podcast and we're fortunate for the Aether Sprint for being a, a site that can host us uh, to be able to get the word out. So looking into the future, uh, what are some of the goals that you would like to see this project going to, sir? Oh, I, I know somebody who's a champion of achieving goals. I'm going to pass that to Jet. Yeah, um, I, I just kind of uh, echo what Major Hill stated. So what we're looking for... Uh, really our finish line uh, down the road is, is looking for that OT&E sponsor. Um, and then uh, really just getting um, kind of leadership buy-in and helping us scale and sustain our project. 
uh, as well as getting it to the hands of the airmen, right? So yeah, we fielded it and we've given it to specific units. But how do how does your your average day to day airman get this piece of equipment, right? They're going to hear about it. It's going to get advertised. You know, we now have that leadership buy in. But how do they actually get that piece of equipment, right? So um, we're already building NSNs for the for the parts in the unit. So really just getting that that authorization for them to be able to purchase it um just like it's a, a piece of equipment that you would buy like just like just like a traditional 30k gen generator right um and and being able to bring it to their unit and actually apply it to um either their daily operational use or or even their wrm assets right whatever they feel like they need to but it's it's finding a way to just to, to be able to put it into the amazon stock for the military and be able to pull it off you know um, so I think it's, it's, that'll be the true finish line for us is when, when an airman can log on and, and search through their supply database or equipment database and, and, you know, uh, build that, that equipment account and, and, and get that piece of equipment rolled down to their door and, and for whatever they need to. Jet, I'm glad you, uh, brought that up you know as a supply person myself i can always appreciate that um has that been the biggest hurdle for you learning that aspect of it and the requirements of of what an equipment piece even is what an nsn is how it's applied and then just the operability to even introduce an item into uh the air force supply chain uh what for sure <laughs> I will say, uh, <laughs> so one, um, I'm a dental guy, right? So medical logistics works completely different than Air Force logistics. And I've worked with many a supply tech, many uh, <laughs> logistics readiness, uh, logistics guys out there. I've had to learn about your guys' system from the foundation all the way up to the fam. Um, and it's it's... It's it's definitely has a lot of hurdles um, with you know it, and it, I I want to rephrase that it's not hurdles it's it's checks and balances that are in place for a reason, um, so yes I would say supply <laughs> has been one of the the most difficult um, to overcome and understand uh, and to integrate and I think a lot of projects probably feel the same way when we're looking for scaling and sustainment is trying to integrate our projects into the system. So that way it's, we can stop referring to it as a, as a project and as a piece of equipment now. <laughs> um, so I, I think that for us, for me uh, specifically, I, th I think the more you educate yourself on, on, on how we, the current process actually looks like, the easier it is for us to integrate. Uh, but that's it's a lot of knowledge, especially when your knowledge is at zero percent uh, on the supply system for the military. Yeah, I'll just yeah, I'll just echo what what Jet said. I actually spent three years at DLA as a data scientist for them, and I uh, I could not believe as somebody who used to just actually fake write up NSNs just to check my code to see if it was working. <laughs> the To now go to the other side and see how difficult it is for users to actually get those created. I, I feel like I'm just relearning in an entirely new supply system looking at it from the other end. It's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, it can be, it can be a lot, but I, uh, I'm glad that you're, you're seeing it through. Um, and now you know uh, this, one of the supply people on staff at PACAP. So uh, if there are some hurdles, give me a ring. Um, a question I like to ask all the teams if you, uh, is uh, if you could go back to where you started in this project and give yourself some advice that you wish you had, knowing what you know now, what would you tell yourselves or your team? Yeah, that's a. That's, I'll let you. I'll let you start, Ray. That's a. That's pretty thought provoking. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, this is just something I've, I've learned uh, in the innovation space in general, um, and that is the biggest thing holding back innovation in PACAF is the ability to dream bigger. 
And uh, what I mean by that is, uh, you know, for the last two years, I've been making you for lists uh, for things that I'm hoping to get funding through for throughout the year and reach out to all these various organizations, external and internal to PACAF to try and get funding. And uh, every year we run through our entire you for list because we didn't dream big enough. And it's, it's that same thing that I would say approaches this project, right? We said, Hey, vice chief of staff, we'd, we'd really like to get one of these kits maybe three, uh, you know, supposedly Arc Water is invented for PACAF. Can you get it out here for us? And yeah, uh, they sent three and we got them out and into location. And then we said, okay, that's great. Let's test them. Let's try them out. Let's get this new new project going. Um, and yeah, with R2JP, uh, we put in requests to try and purchase those initial prototypes uh, last year. And we, I tried to dream as big as I could. I tried to say, okay, you know, it would be really awesome. Like, let's get some more of these out, make sure they work. I'd love to put them at an, an austere location um, to, you know, to try and try and test in a real austere environment. I'd love to work with Japan and see if we can convince them to, um, you know, work on this project with us and support us in this regard. And every single time I don't dream big enough. Right. We've already uh, we've already talked to the jazz def and they're going to they're going to be purchasing one of these systems. Right. I've already uh, we ended up getting uh, two to be using in austere conditions. And I actually have I have um, the you know, the government of Tinian wanting one. But then A4C wants it as well because they want to use it for their construction projects. Right. And so it, it's always the thing I wish I could always do is dream bigger. Um, and yeah, that's the number one thing holding, uh, holding this back. And it's the number one thing I would have told myself months ago is to dream bigger. I would have looked at myself. And I said, no way, no way. Um, but no, it's always the case. It's always the case. I, I don't think you spoke, you talked long enough, Ray. <laughs> uh, for me, it's, I feel like I just don't ever know enough, right? That the Air Force, Air Force ecosystem is just so huge. And I wish what I know now, I could wish I could just funnel it back constantly because I'm always having to find a SME and I, I walk through a day in their shoes to try and figure out what their processes are. And I will say for R2JP, I've had to do that for, God, multiple AFSCs. Recently, just a couple of days ago, uh, I got asked about how I can I can work this into aerospace ground equipment, right? So I literally sat and visited an aid shop and just walked through every piece of equipment, understanding the voltage requirements and, and what they use it for. And, you know, it's I've just with this project, I've done that with POL. I've done that with supply. <laughs> I've done that um, with power production, um, electrical. It, it's I wish I could just give this information back to earlier me because I have a feeling I'm still going to have to do that with other AFSCs, right, as we continue to move forward because, you know, as, as it generates interest, um, those questions are going to arise. And, and honestly, I, I enjoyed the challenge. I love learning about, you know, different the different factors in the Air Force. I, I think... Uh, there was a there was a post before Chief CZ uh, Colon Lopez retired. Uh, he's you know where he explains like uh, you know I'm not an amazing I'm not amazing at any one thing, but I'm good at everything, right? So it's just being a good airman. I, that's that's what I feel like I bring to the table is just I'm just willing to learn and be good enough <laughs> to to understand other people's jobs where at least I can speak. 25 to 30 percent of of the information required um so that you know it i i wish i could give this information back to myself two years ago um i could probably could have helped out a lot sooner <laughs> and then moved us a lot along much further those are those are great answers uh and jet sounds like you're ready for staff work because you just described it to a t just learn a little bit enough of what everybody else does so you can find out who is the person that you need to speak to. That's it. And then you'll be able to figure it out. All right, let's, right. In a, in a month and a half or so, you guys are giving a presentation on this project. Let's say 
all of it goes well. You're chosen. Everything happens. How do you see this project implemented? What is your what is your too big of a dream of where it is that the Air Force has said we want all of it? What is the Air Force using with it? And what what gives you that smile, uh, Major Hill, when you email back and you hear from airmen and people on the ground using this product? Yeah. Well, okay. So here's so yeah. Here's here's uh, showing that I'm I'm trying to to dream uh, yeah, even bigger, right? My goal with uh, with this project, probably any any innovation project we get, is that we brief this to uh, a senior leader, and he says, "I love this so much, I don't want you to touch it anymore. I want to take it, and I'm going to dedicate my staff, and they're going to report to me weekly on their progress, and it's it, you can consider it done." And yeah, that is that is the end state that we're going for. Not because we don't love working on this project. It's awesome. Um, you know, we've, we've talked this whole time about this amazing solar power generator technology. And yet we never mention like, oh, it's eco-friendly, right? And then we, you know, we, we can convince you on so many different avenues that don't even approach that, right? Um, I love this technology. I think for an innovation to be successful, because it's such a competitive space, it has to make sense in every regard. Um, but yeah, that's what I, that's my goal. That's what I would love to see is for the senior leader to say, yeah, this is this is so good that, quite frankly, I don't want to trust uh, some random major uh, out at PACAF and and some uh, yeah and some dental technician out in Japan. He's like, I want to take this and I want my staff to get after it. Uh, well, guys, uh, as we wrap up here, um, once again, I really just want to say. Um, one, thank you for your time and effort um, into this project. Uh, obviously, I mean, it, it's here for a reason, right? So I'm pretty excited to see what your presentation looks like here at the Sprint. Um, I, I commend you both and your team. Uh, Jet, I know it's not easy to try to expert yourself into other career fields. So, um, you know, I... Just the time and the effort that goes into each and every one of these innovation projects. And obviously, you know, at the Sprint, there's so many, some of finalists, but there's so many other projects that you guys have worked on and the other teams have worked on. Uh, these are just the ones that, you know, are going to be there for this presentation. Um, yeah, I just can't say thank you enough to your teams. Um, and if there's any just last things you want to say about your project, I'll just leave it open to you guys. Um, but again, just thank you for your time. Uh, not so much about the project. I do want to give a huge shout out. This project has been in the works for over a year. And I really just want to thank the people who've come and gone, right? Projects, just like the military, you know, they're, they're, it's a revolving door with the team that I've been working with. And, and I, I know I announced and introduced the current team that we have on there, but I huge shout out to people who are there at the very beginning. So Tech Sergeant Justin Sprinkle, uh, Staff Sergeant Pamela Martinez, um, Captain Andrew Armour. Um, yeah, I just, I, I, I would be, I would feel terrible if I didn't, you know, put them. Uh, Stacy Saffron, Major Saffron, if you're out there, you're gonna love this. <laughs> um, thanks for believing in us. And um, yeah, that's that's that's. I just wanted to to plug those people in there um, because they they definitely had a hand in what we're doing. Uh, even though they're not representing us on at Aether Sprint, uh, in spirit they are along with us for the ride. Yeah, no, that's that's great, Jet. And I want to add as well, um, you know, the the individuals that worked hard on Arc Water in the first place. Um, you know, I think that without them uh, inspiring this project, uh, we wouldn't we wouldn't have taken it and run with it. And then the uh, the last thing I just wanted to to close with is. Something I think about a lot, um, you know, one of my actually I think is my favorite thing about the Air Force is that it is absolutely riddled with problems. And what I love about that is that it means that I get to put on the uniform, I get to walk into work and I get to try and solve problems and I get to honestly have an outsized impact. I've been blown away by the experiences and opportunities I've had in the military that I know I just wouldn't get in other sectors. And I think that in innovation, uh, you know, it's 
it's frustrating. You'll run into a lot of barriers. It's not easy. Even just being in the Air Force, you're going to run into a lot of barriers. It's not easy. But I think that's also solving those problems and making that difference is what actually makes um, me want to be in that outsized impact and that that ability for, you know, an individual or a team of individuals to make a difference. Um, it's what gets me excited about innovation and gets me uh, interested in continuing to serve. Thanks. I love it. Well, thanks, guys, and uh, and good luck. Any references to trademarked, copyrighted, or protected products or services, such as books, movies, or businesses, are used here for the limited purpose of education and professional development of Air Force Airmen. If you have any questions, please contact us at www.tesseract.af.mil.